And first of all, I must say that it's my honor to have a conversation with you because you're such an incredible writer. I, uh, I must... I'm, need to say so. I'm not feeling like one at the moment. I'm doing a massive rewrite and edit on um, my new book. So, uh, yes, I know everyone thinks that writers just sit around and drink a lot of coffee. Well, we do, but we also work really hard as well. <laughs> <laughs> well, every profession is, is hard in its own way, yeah. Exactly, yes. exactly. Thank you so much for this pleasure to have an interview with you. So I'll be brief. Can we go right right away to the questions? Of course. Yes. yes. Uh, first of all, I'm, uh, I myself read both your titles, The House of Orchids and The Midnight Rose. I must admit, I liked better the later. Uh, mm -hmm. It looks somehow more realistic, being a sort of a family saga converting four generations. The characters are, are better developed, in my opinion, in a sense of interactions and relations between themselves. I was wondering one thing, uh, is there any underlying personal reason as to why you choose precisely the British India? I mean, perhaps some members of your family used to live here and are there are any of these characters made against people you come to know throughout the course of your life? How personal is it? Well, I didn't realize how personal it was going to be um, because when I had the idea, I did know that some of my family uh, have been in India in the British Raj at the turn of the century, but I didn't know anything about them at all. And so I wrote the book, uh, which I have here, which um, is the English cover. Um, and um, I got to the end and then I told my mother that I was writing about India a hundred years ago and she arrived, sorry I'll turn that off, no problem um, she actually arrived with an old photo album that she had found while she was clearing out the attic, I mean this is absolutely true and um, anyway I was actually working in my office and then my husband and my our daughter came to get me and said, Lucinda, you need to prepare yourself for a shock because your mother's brought something round. And so, and they'd obviously seen it before I did. And I sat down and I started to open the pages of this 100-year-old photo album. And there in front of me were Donald, who was my great-great-great-uncle, Daisy, who was his daughter, um, there was Maud looking just like Maud does in the book and I just sat there and I wept because I was so overcome because somehow I had managed to use all the names and some of the story in the Midnight Rose without knowing about it and I promise you that is verbatim because I didn't have any idea and then there was one photo of a house at the end of the book which I hadn't looked up because um, I just hadn't and then I thought well I should know where this house was where the English family house was and of course my um, PA I say will you google it find it for me and she said oh it's on the edge of Dartmoor and I'm like oh ha ha and she said no it's really on the edge of Dartmoor and I was just I just couldn't believe it but, I mean, that's happened to me before when I have actually walked into my own book and I've written something that I then find out later has actually happened in reality. So, in a way, I suppose, I think I'm told the story. I think I am just a conduit. I'm a channel. Yes, that's that's really impressive story. And I'm not going to ask about the inspiration because it's not going to be an inspiration any longer since I believe it comes from your inner self. However, I will ask you how and why you choose the exact title and where did you find the idea, actually? Okay, do you want the truth or do you want uh, the edited version? The absolute um, you... truth. <laughs> okay, well, the truth is that originally this book was actually called The Still of the Night. And um, I know many authors have this problem because they come up with a title that they absolutely love. And that was the name of this book, and that's what I called it. And when it went out to my 26 publishers, um, some of them said, everything before has been to do with a flower. And I said, yes, I know, but this one, I, I want it to be called The Still of the Night. Anyway, they said that it couldn't be translated easily. So they said, Lucinda, we need to think of a new title. So, in fact, I was in the bath one day, 
And I was desperately trying to think up a new title that would be mine rather than one of the editors from my publishing houses coming up with something that I didn't feel was mine. And I was thinking obviously about the flower connection. And then I thought about the uh, rose bush that grows in um, Annie's cottage and also in the big house itself. And suddenly my my husband is in the uh, in the bedroom and I shout at him and I say, darling, come in, I've got it. Um, and he says, got what? And I said, the book is going to be called The Midnight Rose. Um, and he was like, good, I'm very happy for you. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and now I'll get out of the bath and put some clothes on. But, <laughs> so yes, so that has become the title and it's been used across the world, which is great. And how did you succeed in presenting the characters with such deep moral dilemmas? Through the book is about family, about family bonds and ties, about the family being the most important. Um, I, as I said earlier to you, I really believe that these stories are told to me in a way um, because I don't believe that I actually think up the plot. When I begin a book and I use a dictaphone, I use a, a voice recorder, I don't sit at a desk because I have awful problems with my shoulders um, because I'm an ex-dancer and so I need to move. So I use a dictaphone. And I know where I'm beginning with The Midnight Rose. I knew the start and I knew the main character. I knew I was going to write about someone called Annie, Anahita. And the books always develop by themselves from there. So in a way, um, I don't feel as though I am giving them the moral dilemmas. I believe the characters are developing of their own accord. And all I'm doing is, I suppose, writing their story down, but also steering them. And when we, when we talk about characters, uh, do you have any favorite character from the book? And if you could choose, which character would you put yourself in? Right, okay. Well, I would definitely be Annie, Anahita. Um, sorry, she is my favorite character. <laughs> I don't think I'd want to be her because she has a pretty hard time, let's face it. Um, so, but she is, I think, probably of all my books, my favorite ever character. Um, but it's always, you know, with a new book, I've got a new favorite character. It's like the newest baby is your favorite. Um, but I think that I would have to be Rebecca because I'm an ex-actress. And so a lot of her experiences that she has had, you know, with the media um, and being an actress were mine too. So she is the closest, I suppose, character to me in the book. Um, although she has a lot of problems too, so I'm not sure whether I want to have. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, let's talk about something different. Uh, I'm interested, uh, who are your most acclaimed and favorite authors? Okay, uh, well I love some of the old classics. Mm -hmm. I love um, F. Scott Fitzgerald. Uh, I love Evelyn War. I love the Brontes. I'm a Bronte fan rather than Austen fan. Um, but also, I like some modern authors, um, for example, Hilary Mantel, um, who I think is absolutely wonderful. Um, you know, again, for the, one of the things that everyone asks me is, what do I do for pleasure? And in fact, what I do for pleasure is read. I read someone else's book. So, um, so I am always, I've always got a book on the go. Yes, you predicted my next question. I wanted to ask you, what do you do when you when you are not writing? What what well, are your favorite? Read. <laughs> you read and actually. Also, I have four children, so um, and a husband, so and dogs. Um, so I just try and enjoy my family life because a lot of my life I'm traveling to, um, you know, meet people and uh, promote the books and. So I just like to live a very quiet country life when I'm at home in England. Um, as a great author and writer, I want, want to ask you, for all the Macedonian readers, uh, what do you think makes a fable a good story? Um, I think having real characters that you can associate with um, when that you believe in them so much, they're so believable, that when they go through pain, you're with them. When they go through happiness and joy, you're joyful for them. 
Um, so I, I definitely think it's the characters that, that make a great story, not the plot, because the plot must come from the character. Yes, and because it's difficult to sum up something like, like Midnight Rose in a few words, uh, I gotta ask you, uh, can you give me a few words that will sum up the book, your Midnight Rose? <laughs> What, all 185,000 yeah. of them? Yeah. Right, okay. <laughs> uh, all right, well, I'm going to have to do this very much on the spot. Um, so I will just say the words that come to my head. I would say India, I would say heat, dust, passion. How many have we got? One, two, three. Pain and love. And love, definitely love. And uh, for the end, uh, can you send a message to all the Macedonian readers and public and why they should read The Midnight Rose and The House of Orchids? Okay, well, first of all, I have to say my one word that I know in Macedonian, and I probably won't pronounce it properly, but anyway, it's Zdravo! Zdravo! Yes, that means hi! Uh, so, okay, so Zdravo! Hi! Um, I just want to say thank you so much, first of all, for buying the book. Um, I love the fact that you are supporting me um, in Macedonia and I really hope that uh, you enjoy The Midnight Rose. I know it's a long book and there is a lot of passion and there is a lot of pain. So I actually hope the end makes you cry because it made me cry for two hours. <laughs> <laughs> and when can we expect you in Macedonia? Whenever you ask me. I'd love to come. <laughs> Uh, I must say that here, here is uh, the Midnight Rose on Macedonian, the cover. And I think it is the most beautiful, beautiful cover. I absolutely love it. Oh, thank you so much. And people love it too, actually. Do uh, they? Yes, a lot oh. of people are talking about the Midnight Rose in Skopje and in Republic of Macedonia. So it was my pleasure to do this conversation with you. Well, that is so lovely. And seriously, I have a lot of covers where I just look at them and I go, this isn't my book, but that is absolutely beautiful. So, so thank you again. Thank you so much. I won't take you any of your time. All uh, right. Thank you so much. Thank it you. was lovely to talk to you. Thank really you happy. so much. You're such a pleasant person. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Take care. Take bye. care. Bye. Bye. bye.